660 AM, The Answer. We return to Ladies Can We Talk with host Debbie Georgiatis on 660 AM, The Answer. Hey there, welcome back to Ladies Can We Talk. And I always thank our listeners every single time we come on the air. Thank you for tuning in. And I believe we have on the line Tom Giovanetti. Tom? Hi, Debbie. How are you? Very well. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Well, thank you. You know, I told our listeners before you came on that I really want to talk a little bit about tonight about this FCC takeover of the Internet. And I think it happened. I mean, there was discussion as it was happening about the proposed regulations, and then it seemed to just kind of go on without much more attention. And I saw this one line I wanted to ask you about. There's a gentleman who actually serves as one of the commissioners on the FCC, and I believe his name is pronounced Ajit Pai. Is that right? That's right, yes. And he was quoted as saying, the FCC's net neutrality regulatory regime is a solution that won't work in search of a problem that doesn't exist. He was speaking against it. But So tell us about this. What, what, why is the FCC moving to control the Internet? Uh, Debbie, it's a very, very insidious thing that's going on, and I'm glad you want to talk about it because I think too many people are really not aware of, of the danger here. And I'm going to try to back up a little bit and sort of set the stage for this, if that's okay. You know, uh, one of the basic differences between the progressive left and free market conservatives is that if you believe in markets, you're content to let markets determine outcomes. Uh, we're not trying to reshape the world as we think it ought to be. We trust markets to determine what happens. I, re I remember when Apple came out with the iPod, I, I thought it was the most ridiculous product that anyone had ever thought up. <laughs> I thought, who needs to have their entire music collection in their pocket with them at all times? Well, it turns out I was wrong. Uh, the market showed that that was an ingenious product, and I was wrong. It's a good thing that was not up to me. It's a good thing that was up to markets. So if you're, if you're a free market conservative, you're content to let markets determine outcomes, and if you're wrong, you're content to be wrong. Well, the progressive left is not nearly so understanding. Uh, the progressive left wants to reshape society according to a particular vision. And the only way to do that is to control government and to use government power. And so one of the ways that the progressive left has wanted for decades now to reshape the media is to gain regulatory control of the media. Uh, when I was growing up, the left had control of the media. There were only three television networks. They were all run by liberals. There was no such thing as talk radio. There was no such thing as Fox News, and there was no Internet. And they liked it that way. Then Ronald Reagan came along, and he eliminated what was called the Fairness Doctrine, and once Ronald Reagan eliminated that regulation, we saw the explosion of conservative talk radio and the, the deregulatory attitude toward the media that came from Ronald Reagan is what allowed the Internet to basically explode onto the scene without heavy government regulation. Well, this has made the progressive left really crazy, and one of their goals for about the last 30 years has been to regain control of the media. Well, today the media is the Internet. That's how people communicate, whether it's streaming video, streaming audio, or whatever. And so there's this organization called Free Press that was set up by someone named Robert McChesney. He's a self-admitted Marxist, and they have been lobbying for government regulatory control of the Internet and for the media. And groups like mine, IPI, and others have been fighting them for over a decade on this thing called net neutrality. And what net neutrality is – is the idea of putting government through the FCC in regulatory control of the Internet. And we had successfully fought it off for almost a decade until this past year, when President Obama put in charge of the FCC an activist chairman named Tom Wheeler, and he forced through heavy, heavy government regulation of the Internet, the same kind of regulations that were used back in the 1930s and 40s to regulate the old AT&T uh, telecom monopoly network. And now the FCC has the power, if it chooses to use it, uh, to levy taxes and fees on Internet use. It has the power, if it chooses to use it, to put price controls on the price people pay for their broadband and for their Internet. And it has the power, if it chooses to use it, to regulate content control the same way that the FCC has control over content over broadcast television. And we, the, while the FCC has promised not to do these things now, of course, 
That's simply a promise by the FCC not to do it. And I'm not optimistic about government regulators keeping their promises to not regulate. Wow, Tom, I am so glad you laid out that explanation. It is so helpful because I've read different things about this FCC takeover of the Internet that got off into too much complexity about why this should be a different thing than AT&T kind of regulation. It just got too much in the weeds. But what you really provided, and I'm so grateful, is an overarching description of the reasons why the left would be pushing for FCC Internet control and, and really the harm it could lead to. But I tell you, I think one reason people aren't alarmed is because I guess it's been in place, and I'm not sure the date, two months now or so, and nothing seems to have happened. And so I think people think, well, you know, yeah, they could do that, but they really wouldn't. And everything seems the same to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, abs- oh absolutely. Although it's very interesting. It, it came into effect in April. So you're right. It's only been a few months. Uh, but they've already broken one of their promises. Uh, they promised to not exert any kind of price controls over the prices people pay for broadband and for Internet services. But just about a month ago, they have opened a proceeding into what's called interconnection charges, and these are the fees that companies pay each other to connect their networks together. So they've already, just a few months after promising not to do it, they've already opened an inquiry into whether or not they should do that. So, you know, regulators regulate. <laughs> they, don't, they don't forbear. They don't refuse to regulate. And what's really important is that the FCC has just been given enormous power. Now, whether this FCC or future FCCs use that power is one thing, but think about how quickly socially in this country things have changed. I mean, imagine the FCC deciding to start regulating conservative websites because of what they call hate speech. Uh, Imagine a church having a sermon online on their website about uh, why that church believes that same-sex marriage is immoral and wrong. And imagine the FCC saying, well, you know what, that's hate speech, and uh, we're going to demand that you take that down off your website, or we will shut your website down. I mean, all those kinds of things, as as apocalyptic as that may sound, uh, the FCC did not have the power to do that six months ago. Today, the FCC has the power to do that. I'm so glad you mentioned that exact example because amazingly that's where I was going to go was, you know, we in America, we've always, I mean, the Internet is in the scheme of American history relatively new, but every young person today leaving college, leaving high school, it's just, it's part of society. It's what everybody knows we have. We have it there. You can find out anything. You can find, you know, ancient Greek mythology answers. You can find mathematical solutions. You can find any information you want. And it's always been uh, a free and just astounding source for people. And I think that there's a... um, presumption that'll always be there, that we won't ever really have a problem. But, you know, you go to other countries and you read about other countries, for example, North Korea and China, repressive regimes, either entirely eliminating access or greatly limiting it or deciding who can be on and not. And people think America is so free and different. But this is, there's, there's, this is a, a, to me, a very dangerous step in American society and government to even agree they can have this power, even though they promise not to use it. It's very dangerous to put this kind of power in government hands, and you do sound like, you know, if you warn that things like this could happen, you sound like a wacko. I mean, I certainly understand that I sound like a wacko when I'm talking about what could happen. But, you know, the city of San Francisco operates a Wi-Fi network aboard their trains, uh, uh, aboard the uh, BART area rapid transit system, and uh, they were having a lot of outages. This was a couple years ago. They were having a lot of delayed trains, and people started complaining on their network about the poor service, and the city of San Francisco pulled the plug on the network. They shut it down because they didn't <laughs> like the complaints. Now, that, that, is, that is cutting off free speech because it's critical of the government. Yes, it is. I'm going to assume, I don't know what the underlying legislation is that gave the FCC this regulatory authority, but, you know, to solve this, because I always try to go on the show, how do we solve this? What can we do? It has to be that Congress can take action. Maybe not this Congress or maybe not Congress under President Obama, but a Congress can simply, I mean, essentially pass a law saying FCC may not regulate the Internet. Wouldn't that about solve it? That's exactly what needs to happen. Some of us were advocating about six or eight years ago well, I guess it was about eight years ago when we still had a Republican in the White House, 
Uh, some of us were advocating that this is the time to do FCC reform, and Congress never got around to it. You're exactly right. We need to pass a bill that dramatically reduces the power and the authority of the FCC. That will not and cannot happen while Barack Obama is in the White House. But should a Republican occupy the White House 18 months from now, isn't that a cheery thought? Uh, yes. This should be one of Congress's priorities, is to eliminate this, this incredible amount of government control over the Internet that they've just taken. Oh, I couldn't agree more. So, Tom, I um, we're up against where we need to zip off to our break, but I do. I mentioned to our listeners before you came on about IPI, the Institute for Policy Innovation. I want to just give you a second to t- to tell our listeners about your organization. You're the president of IPI, about what you are, what you do, and how to find you on the internet while you oh, still can. Oh, sure, thanks, Debbie. We have a very easy website. It's IPI. Dot org, IPI.org. We are a 29-year-old free market think tank. Uh, most organizations like IPI are in Washington, but Dallas is unusual in that there are two groups here, and IPI is one of those, and NCPA, who you had on earlier, is another. And uh, we work on issues related to constitutional government, economic growth, and personal liberty and freedom. And so if people go to our website, they'll find lots of information on the stuff we've been talking about tonight as far as net neutrality and FCC regulation. But they'll also find information about tax reform and stimulating economic growth and getting rid of Obamacare and what the right solution is for the health care problem, how to fix Social Security and issues like that. We're talking with Tom Givenet, the president of IPI, Institute for Policy Innovation. Tom, thank you so much for calling in. Thanks for having me on, Debbie. And we're going to zip off to our break here so we have enough time to get to it. We're going to go back in our next segment, back to talking more about the debate and about the presidential elections of 2016. Carly Fiorina is on the rise, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about her. So please come back after our break to Ladies Can We Talk with Debbie Georgiatis on 660 AM, The Answer. 660 AM, The Answer.